So remember. Sailing from Stonehaven Harbour on the Shimarnik. We're going away out to see him working his creels. That's it, we're away now. That's us going round Dooney Point. That's Stonehaven in the background. We're heading south. Now here's Zander away to prepare his bait for the creels. The bait he's working with it's mackerel. There's some headache there as well on that blue box. But it's a mackerel he's cutting into two halves so he can fit two bits into each creel. Now here's the flag, this is to mark the creels, so he just comes alongside this flag and pulls it on board, pulls in the floats, gets enough slack in so he can loop it over the top guide wheel and then he passes the rope through the V wheel. That's the one's going now. He just takes this flag sticks in that pipe, hangs up the floats, as just so as when I roll about the deck. So it's the two floats now hung up. Next thing wait for the creels. That's the whole lot, it just goes away itself. You'll see him working a lever. There's a lever high up above his head. He stops and starts it with the lever. So here's the start, here's the chain. First thing comes up, a lump of chain. This is for weight. After bad weather, you get a bit of motion in the water and a strong tide combined. The creels are inclined to shift on the bottom, hence the lump of chain to help to keep them in the same position. Okay, now here we started. Here's the first creel. He takes it on board, opens the door, takes out any old bait, any rubbish, starfish, shells. Takes out the crabs, but there's no crabs there. Oh, he's putting another bait in. Shut the door, put the creel on the table. Now oh, what's number one? Ah, oh, this is better though. I see something this time. Here you go, that's one. Two. Three, that's a good creel. That one's doubtful for size, it's given to measure. That two bars on top of the bait, they are spaced out for the size of a crab. So if a crab goes through between the two bars, throw it back in the water again. Oh, well, that was better. Here's the next creel now coming up. See him stopping the winch when the creel comes up. Puts up his hand, stops the winch. I'll we'll just watch for it. Here it comes. Up his hand, stop the winch, take aboard the creel, start the winch. Open the door, take out any crabs, clear the creel of any rubbish, miss the starfish, old bait. Sometimes shellfish, put in a fresh bait, shut the door, 
put the creel on the table and we'll see same performance every time now that's four creels hauled already there is 18 creels in number we call it a fleet, that's the length of the creels 18 in number and they're spaced out 10, 12 pies in between them so it's 60, 70 feet two rows of creels on there now, on the table. The length of the table, it holds six creels in length, so it's a third away already. Now just watch the next creel. I know what's coming. <laughs> watch this fish. Oh, it's quick. It just wriggles over the side. Oh, here's something different this time. A good lobster. I'll bet you it went a wriggle over the side. Wait with it in a box. Oh, and now a codling. Oh, it's all happening here today. That's been a wee bit of excitement. That past three creels. A wriggly fish, a lobster, a codling. He's working back and back and back towards me all the time. I think I'm going to be in the road here. Now 
No, no, I'm going to up the shift. So the first chance I'll get, I'll go past them, run to the side, and take forward, take it, pull him from the other side. Now's my chance, here's a lobster. Right, I'll get, takes this lobster out the creel, comes off with the lobster. Now's my chance to get past him. I'm going to let jump. Oh, that was quick. I'll bulk you up here now. In the creels now, that's the table full up. So the next is a flag, that's a flag for the end that marks the end of the creels. The next creel, you'll just take it on board, make it all ready. So here it goes, he just opens the door, takes out the or takes any crabs out, throw away the rubbish, put in a fresh bait, shut the door. And then he'll just chuck it back into the water again to get them going. Here we go. That's a creel away. Okay, he'll go now and give the boat a bit of speed and shoot them back over the side. So here they go. This won't take long. A couple of minutes, that's it, and it will be back in the water again. Last creel away, so that's your fishing trip with the crabs over. Now the chain. The only thing left now to chuck away the flag and the floats. So that you've seen the creels being wicked, you've seen them coming in, now you've seen them going out. So that's your trip past. Okay, now we'll head away back to St. Haven and see what's happening in there.
thanks Malcolm, who provided us with the crabs fresh from the sea. Used to be a very, very busy harbour this turn of the century with the fishing industry. Uh -huh. And in the area for herring, landing the herring here. And why did that stop? I suppose declining the fish stocks, and it? I suppose it must have been that. But um, there's still a lot of creel fishermen come in, crabs and lobsters. This is your man? Yes, this is him. Yep. See what kind of catch he's got to do. They're not crabs, they're partons. Why is that? As in dolly. I dollies. suppose it's the, the, the Scottish name for yes. them. Right. And a famous soup from this area is called parton brie. Parton brie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's fascinating. Well, there you go. What would I have to pay for, for that particular crab in a shop? I suppose it would depend if you wanted it already dressed. If you wanted to buy it the way it is, I would have thought probably a couple of good. Two, They'll sell two them by about three pounds. Two, two, so Good value, it's isn't it? very good value, yes, they are. Compared to lobsters, I mean, they're very good value. And I think, yes. to be quite honest, no. the, the taste of a crab, I sometimes think it's even superior to lobster. I disagree. Yeah. I think it's always superior yeah, to lobster. I it think is. crab's much nicer. Yeah, I love it's, it. It's fantastic. How many do you need? Three. And I would like um, two cocks, please, and a hen. Okay. Now, why do you want two cocks and a hen? What's the difference? Because I, I want uh, more white meat for the, the dish that I'm going to do. And you find that the, the cocks have obviously bigger claws, so you'll get more white meat from that. And sometimes in the hen crabs, you get the, the wonderful sort of coral inside, the roe inside. And I want some of that, but that's going to be a nice balance. A lot of work to do yeah, before we can get to eat them. They're off. <laughs> I remove the claws, the front claws, first of all, legs. With easy expertise, Marion cooked, cleaned, and prepared the crab meat, which was then mixed with local asparagus and shallots to make the stuffing for the salmon. Despite its richness, this is still a dish using simple seasonal ingredients. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah. I think we could just eat this on its own, actually. It's lovely. You could. Mm, it's oh, you seriously could, mm -hmm. could you? Mm -hmm. So, I'm now going to stuff the, the fillet of salmon. Okay. I just love cooking for friends in the kitchen round. I'm very informal. Um, but as a family, we do eat quite well, yes. And I'm afraid my family have always been my guinea pigs. When you do go out, when your friends have to cook for you, they must be petrified. <laughs> you know, they, they, they must feel inadequate. And, well, and the friends that know me well, they're fine. It's the ones that don't know me quite so well that I think probably feel a bit intimidated. But uh, I never, I would never criticise um, ever when I go to someone's house. Sometimes I think you get the best food in the world in private homes. What I do object to is paying a lot of money in a restaurant for bad food. And um, I, I do object then. I do complain. <laughs> At Aberdeen Harbour, we're going away a trip via Troy. The boat we're going on is the Alexander's. The other boat of the pier is called the Aquarius. So 
let's go to clear the harbor now. The skippers have decided it will go off 45 miles and I'll start fishing there. This bit throwing we're going to. One boat he puts away the net. The other boat comes alongside, passes away a front by boat to attach the net, and then both boats run out with half a mile away. Two about quarter of a mile apart between the two boats. So what's once you get two angle two for three or four hours before a pull up. But they just work a one net between the two boats. Okay, it's arrived at the fishing ground. That's not going away now from the Aquarius. It's has to turn to work on it this week. Start away with the bog. The bog is roughly 200 feet in length. After the bog goes out, the company about the main bit of net that floats on it. And it is also 200 feet in length. Once the net's out, you get the spreaders before the wire. The spreaders is 200 feet in length as well, consisting of a chain the bottom and the way on the top. That's the last part of it going away now. Next move, the Alexanders goes alongside the Aquarius, passes the wire from the Alexanders to attach the Aquarius' net, so both boats can run the wire out and start fishing. Both boats now got in the way attached to the net. No bother, a simple net, fine deal like this. But it's not saying the breeze of wind. But that's it, they just heave it up now to make sure it's clear and then let the wear run.
that's the first part of the job completed. Now they go for three or four hours before it blew up. Time to heave up. That's the two boats now that come together. And then they stop the engine, stop the propeller, heave up, pulling the boats back towards the net. That's all we're wearing now, that's up the spreaders. So now, back alongside the Aquarius, disconnect the wire from the net, give him his net back so he can pull it himself. That's the net being pulled now. This time the Aquarius, he takes the fish for this hole. And then the next time the Alexander takes fish. But sometimes there's too much fish for one boat to take and they, they'll both take fish. But anyway, this time it's the Aquarius' turn.
Uh, it's quite a good hole, but the query is, he'll take his fish himself. There's two lifts there. The size of that box, I hope it holds three lifts. That's not going away again. There's no stopping. Daylight, dark, and just keep going. This is not being pulled now for the next hole. So I've jumped a bit there. So here goes. Alexander, he takes the fish this time. I hope there's something to get a start.
That's a good hole, that. That'll keep him going for a fully. Here's him working now with the fish from the hopper. It comes up in this conveyor belt system. The bunch are all laid out, they're all jammed in, in drawers. So the small fish, they just throw them into baskets, they're ungutted. The bigger fish, they got them as they go along, select them out in different baskets. Here is a shoot at the end of a belt where the fish go down back into the water. But slowly to see they're brown. Very few of them is alive. That's said now, giving the fish a wash. And I just work a system, I just keep, keep the things going. Once the basket gets filled up, I take them away and wash them. And once they build up there, I pass them down below, put them into boxes.
Aye, uh, the baskets are getting filled up too. Next move, we'll push the fish down to the fish room. Get the fish laid out for my nice. Uh, here we go. Here's Raymond away to put the fish down. In the fish room, the leather box is about ten across. Put the ice in the boxes in the bottom. And then you pass the fish down this trunk in, into the boxes, just spread them out. And off a bony day, is it? Just flat calm. And you don't let things in the hair, but I'll let pay for this. This is too fine. Here we go. I can't was too bonnet the list. The rock will run before the wind here and then I'll turn about in the wood and I'll shoot and I'll tow up through the wind. To save that tone against the wind and tone it for it. See it with some bony days, but here we are. Here's the other side, here's a breeze of wind. They're getting the net away though, as the spreader's going away now. You'll notice when we come alongside with the breeze of wind, they don't get so close. They throw the float into the water, and then they throw a grappling in to, to catch the float. They kind of get quite so close with the breeze of wind.
we've actually do it for three or four hours. It's time to pull up. Actually, I'm not joking, but just now it's not too bad. But before I get the net pulled, it comes doing a short of rain and it freshens the wind up. Just watch it, you'll see the weather changing just before I get the net pulled. It's getting a wafty now. Swill's fairly building up. That's all within 10 minutes. Thank you all for being on Hard Talk. Thank you.